Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Rev Talk this week. I'm David Kellum, and excited to be with you again. Excited is one of my favorite words, by the way. And even in the COVID-19 uh, time period, we're trying to be positive and upbeat, and hopefully sports will come back. We're seeing a little taste of that uh, nationally to some degree, and hopefully uh, things will get back to normal pretty good. But hopefully uh, all of yours and your friends are safe, and uh, I know COVID-19 has affected a lot of people to this point and our, our thoughts continue to be with you. We, we opened each week with uh, our administration. We had TK last week uh, and that was kind of fun to get to meet TK. He came to several of the Rev Talks uh, this past year when we were live at Boo Ray and uh, uh, is now a uh, deputy AD uh, working for Keith Carter. And this week we go back to our athletic director, Keith Carter, and it's good to have Keith on again. And uh, all right, my beagle just walked by my feet right here, Keith. I know you got a new puppy. Have you stepped on the puppy yet? I'm just curious. A couple of times, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Easy to easy to get under your feet. A scary thought. Hey, it looks like you're in the office today, uh, uh, this evening, and uh, I know that uh, you're excited about uh, hopefully getting staff back pretty soon. Yeah, you know, I've been coming in and out of the office a little bit. Uh, one was out of necessity. Our, our uh, internet was down at the house, so I had to come in here and, and grab some internet. Um, but yeah, we are looking at, at hopefully getting our staff back maybe around that June 1st time frame and, uh, and then, you know, working on a plan and, and, and phasing in getting our student athletes back and hopefully having them ready to roll by July 1. So uh, it's, it's happening fast. Uh, there's a big vote on, on Friday with the presidents and chancellors with the SEC to, um, to see whether or not they're going to extend that May 31st uh, restriction of, of having student athletes on campus in our facilities. Uh, my gut tells me that, that hopefully we'll be able to, to, to have some relief on that and, and, and start getting our, our folks in here June 1. But uh, it's exciting. And, and again, you know, as we talked about throughout all of these, these Zoom and, and remote uh, uh, rev talks, we, we want to do everything the right way from a, from a health and safety standpoint. I uh, feel like we have a really, really good plan on that with testing and uh, you know, all of those measures that we're going to need to do as we bring everybody back. But uh, it is exciting to use your word uh, to, to think about, you know, getting everybody back to campus and, and some sense of normalcy. And, you know, I think we all need that. We all need to kind of get back in a routine and, and start working toward a goal of, of hopefully, you know, getting our fall sports ready to go and, and starting those up in, in, in late August and early September. You know, it's interesting. Uh, you don't realize how fast the Internet is till you go to campus, by the way. Uh, I, we lost power here at home on one of the Rev Talk weekends, and Kyle Campbell let me come to the office in the back, very safe. And man, it's a big difference. His home internet's not nearly as good. You know, Keith. Uh, another thing I want to talk about in the head end of the the show is uh, we lost a great Rebel this week in in Ben Williams, General Ben Williams, who was an All American at Ole Miss, went on to have a great pro career uh, with the Bills, was uh, made the Pro Bowl, just a, a wonderful individual. Uh, he and James Reed, uh, two of the guys that were the first African-Americans to play football uh, at Ole Miss. And I know Ben has stayed kind of close to the program through the years, and that's a great loss for us. Yeah, it really is. And, and uh, you know, had the pleasure and the honor of, of spending a little time with Ben over the years. And uh, just what a great guy, you know. Uh, obviously a, a pioneer for Ole Miss and, and our football program and our institution really, you know, just somebody who came in and, and broke down, you know, racial barriers and, uh, you know, basically set the tone and, and gave opportunities for a lot of, of, of student athletes along the way. And, um, you know, he, his contribution to, to Ole Miss and the Ole Miss football program uh, will always be thought about. And, and, and everyone I know is very thankful for, for what he did. But, uh, you know, I just enjoyed the, the highlight video that our, that our folks put out. I mean, what a, what a player, you know, just to see him. One. Uh, you know, busting through that line and all those sacks and tackles for losses. But, uh, you know, just a, a great individual. I know, I know had some really tough times kind of later in his life with some health issues and, and different things. But uh, to lose him, that's a, that's a huge loss. And, uh, you know, I tweeted that, that uh, we'll never forget, you know, his contributions to, to our, our program and our institution. And, uh, you know, we have the Williams Reed foyer over in the Manning Center that uh, we honor both of those guys that you mentioned. And, uh, just a big loss, and I and, uh, got so many texts and emails and different things, and, and certainly we'll want to do something as we get back into to playing to honor him and, and do something on the field or, or in one of our games or, or that type of thing. But a uh, huge loss and a great Rebel, and uh, like I said, will never be forgotten. Yeah, absolutely. And our thoughts and prayers, obviously. I know sometimes that's used uh, just as a throw-out-there thing, but sincerely, we really 
are, are praying for the family and, and all those are the friends and former teammates and all. Harry Harrison on our football staff played with Ben. He's got some great stories about what an incredible player he was and his experience here. And uh, we were very fortunate. It was a it was a very a, a big uh, day when he arrived on campus and a great day when he left as well. What a wonderful career uh, too. Some other positives, Keith, um, that we, you talked a little bit a moment ago about getting the staff back maybe and we're to having that vote to see if we can get some student athletes back on campus. But Ole Miss football finished number one in the SEC, second nationally in APR with a 997. And you've got to be tickled about that. That's incredible. Well, absolutely, you know, and, and that's where, you know, we, we obviously always talk about winning championships and, and, you know, those are usually talked about on the field or on the court, but this is winning a championship too. You know, this, this is kind of what we're here for. And, um, you know, Bob Baker and the staff over at the FedEx do a tremendous job. The, the liaisons, Tom Luke and Katie Basin and, and those folks that are in football that, that kind of help with the liaison over to, to academics, they do a great job. And, and really, you know, department wide, the, the APR scores were, were off the charts, you know, and, and that's what you, that's what you look for. And, and certainly, you know, sometimes those get lost, as I mentioned, but ultimately that's what we're here for. We want, we want kids in school. We want them to graduate. Uh, we want them to, to leave with a meaningful degree and, and all of that, you know, an APR leads up to that. So uh, really excited about that. And, um, you know, some really good news to, to tweet out earlier this week, but uh, a lot of good work, obviously by our student athletes uh, and a lot of good work by our staff. Really proud of that. Yeah, no doubt. You, you think about eligibility as fans, we say, oh, I hope they stay eligible and do good in class. But it really goes beyond that, doesn't it? You want not just be eligible, you want them to maximize their experience uh, academically, too. Yeah, 100 percent. And and I think that, you know, I, I was the same way you probably were as well. When you come in as an 18 year old freshman, you're not thinking about you know life after college or, or sport or, or whatever that looks like. You're just kind of living day by day. Um, and I think our, our staff, whether it be, you know, the, the individual coaching staffs uh, and then obviously our, our FedEx staff, um, they just do a really good job of helping these, these young people, you know, navigate, you know, some, some tough situations. But, but ultimately, like I said, we want them to leave here with a degree, but we want them to leave with a meaningful degree, something that they can go out into the real world and, and enjoy a career, uh, you know, be successful uh, and do all those things. And just, just really proud of, uh, you know, one, just the academic work that our, our folks did, you know, with the APR and all that, but two, you know, going online, doing some, you know, going through challenging situations right. and new situations, uh, both from the student athlete side and the academic side. Uh, it's just a really good semester for us and uh, really proud of, of the way everybody, uh, you know, bought into that and, and did a great job. Okay. Since we last talked to you, we talked to TK last week, who's, who you've got kind of spearheading scheduling and we, we signed up with USC. Wow, you know, with our current head coach, there's a little bit of story there. But uh, so Ole Miss and uh, Southern Cal are going to play two years, 25 and 26. Tell us a little bit about how that came to be and, uh, you know, what an incredible non-conference opponent we've got lined up. Yeah, that's that's really exciting. You know, I, I think as we, we kind of look back over the past few years, we, we, we try to schedule, you know, certainly – you know, games that the coaches want to play and feel like we can be competitive in and, and those type of things. But you look back and, and you look at that Texas series that we had, the home and home that we had with them and just how successful that was. We won one and lost one. Uh, but I think everybody from both fan bases, you know, both programs really, really enjoyed that. And, you know, it was really cool to have kind of a storied program come to Oxford. We got the chance to go there. And so we're going to look to do that from time to time. You know, you're not going to play a, a team of that caliber or, or that magnitude every year. Um, but I think when you can throw one of those in every, you know, five or six, seven years, I think that's a really cool thing. So USC, obviously, you know, storied history, you know, very successful. I think 11 national championships that they have to, you know, to their credit. And um, really it just kind of kind of happened really quickly. Um, you know, they were looking for a game. We were looking for a game that the times worked. And, you know, obviously we have this mandate where we have to uh, play at least one power five opponent outside of our SEC schedule each year. So we've been working really hard to get those scheduled out for the next really 15 years. Yeah. Um, you know, some of those are, are kind of so far out there that you know none of us may be around when we play those games. But um, this one's this one's pretty quick. 25 and 26. You know, five and six years away, and um, just a really really cool matchup. Like you said, you know, the history of it and, and being able to go to their campus, them coming to ours is going to be really neat. But uh, you know, obviously, with the underlying storylines with Coach Kiffin and, and kind of the way things all happened out there, you know, he had a 
a really cool experience as an assistant coach, won national championships, and he comes back as the head coach and maybe not the ending that he wanted. Um, so it'll be interesting to, to, to go out there and, and them come here. But, uh, you know, I think it'll be a fun matchup for our fans, and, and certainly I think it'll be fun for our, our student athletes and, and our coaching staff. Keith, what was his reaction or involvement if there, there was any to this? Um, basically just gave the, the go ahead. You know, I, I think a lot of this is, uh, you know, football is a little different than the other sports. It's, it's really scheduled more on the administrative side mm -hmm. uh, than, than some of the other sports. You know, you look at baseball and basketball, a lot of those are the head coaches and, and director of ops are, are intimately involved in, in the scheduling. Those are usually a year or two out at the most. Uh, but football scheduling is such a giant puzzle to solve. And um, we, we kind of work toward that with our committee. Like you said, TK is, is kind of in, in charge of that. Wesley Owen has been instrumental with that as well. And then, then myself, um, we, we have a third party partner called Gridiron. It's a software that basically a lot of, uh, you know, departments use to kind of help keep all the scheduling in line. And uh, a guy named Dave Brown runs that and he's, mm -hmm. he's the scheduling whisperer. Like he, he understands games and what needs to be played. And, and Dave kind of came to us with this concept. We liked it. And uh, got with Coach Kiffin, and, and he, he liked it. So um, I think it'll be good. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just excited about that matchup. And we actually have some others uh, that will be coming out here in, in the next few weeks, hopefully, that, that will uh, pique people's interest as well. Uh, Shannon Singletary, I wanted to go there for a second, uh, has been involved as your liaison with the university. And uh, we hope to have him on again uh, down the road and kind of get an update from him, but I know he's got to be one of the busiest dudes in your department right now. Not that everybody's not doing a wonderful job, but uh, not only trying to orchestrate the safety of the return of student athletes, but kind of working with the university too. What's your conversation with him been like lately? Well, you, you hit it on the head. Shannon has been awesome. Um, you know, I knew right away, you know, early on in this process when they asked for somebody to kind of be that liaison that, you know, with Shannon's medical background, uh, with his attention to detail, just the way he worked has been, uh, you know, he's been really, really good. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, you look at the, the, the PowerPoint that he has to bring everybody back, it's about 30 pages long. So very, very detailed. Uh, we're going to have to make sure that, you know, if we get one chance at this, we do it the right way. And, uh, you know, Shannon's done a, a tremendous job with that. So really, you know, happy for his leadership and, and just his attention to detail throughout this whole process. And, and I know as we move forward, as it gets even more detailed, as we have to actually implement this 30-page PowerPoint, uh, you know, Shannon will be right there, you know, spearheading that as well. All right. Some schools across the country, I read this here over the last couple of days, are altering their academic calendar for the fall uh, to, to end Thanksgiving, maybe kill fall break. And, we haven't heard anything at this point from, from Ole Miss, but uh, they're doing that to try to avoid maybe a second spike in COVID-19 through those winter months and also, and I'm just using that as an example. There could be some other things of, of that nature that uh, you'd have to orchestrate with the, the university and all, but there's, seems like there's, Keith, a lot of forward thinking about the what ifs, and you've kind of talked about that on this show the whole time too. Yeah, you know, again, Chancellor Boyce has been, you know, tremendous throughout this whole process and, and being very proactive and creative in, in ways to get things done. And, you know, I'll, I'll probably reserve, you know, some comment for, for the campus opening back up to, to let them talk about. But, but there is a lot going on right now. I know what you just mentioned, South Carolina, uh, you know, that's an option that we've talked about, uh, something similar to that. Um, but, you know, I, I know that the hope and, and the, the optimistic look at this is that we're going to bring students back in the fall. Uh, in some form or fashion, you know, my gut tells me there's probably going to be some more online learning, even when we get back to normal. You know, I think people realize just like we've realized we can use Zoom for meetings and different things that that online learning can be a, a great thing as well. So we may see a, a shift in that even when when things get back to normal, that there's more online presence. Uh, even if, if, if students are in Oxford, they may be using online even more. So um, I think that there's a lot of great options out there. You know, I think the chancellor has been great and, and has basically said, you know, athletics is going to be the, the first mover in this to, to kind of give us a test case. You know, as we bring back 400 student athletes, you know, throughout June and July, um, if we can do that successfully, then we try to, to build that up to where we can do that with 20,000 students, you know, maybe in August. And so that's, that's uh, there's, a, there's some pressure there for athletics to get it right and, and do it the right way. But, you know, as we mentioned, we have a great plan and we're excited to do that. All right, a few fan questions. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Uh, Chris Muller. Uh, this is one that uh, we got when you put 
out your video early. What is the best thing to happen to or in Ole Miss athletics since COVID-19 crisis? It's not all negative. There's some positive. Yeah, there, there has been some positive. You know, I, I think that, um, you know, one of the things that, that we've all realized and as I've spoken to our student athlete leadership group and even our, some of our coaches and our staff is that, you know, we love what we do and we miss what we do. You know, and I think that the fans are probably thinking the same way. They're they're ready to come back and sit in our stadiums and, and watch, you know, sports. And, you know, we as a staff, and I know our student athletes are so ready to get back. And, you know, I think maybe sometimes we, we take a, a little bit for granted what we have, you know, in the great thing that we get to do every day with, with working with these student athletes. And, and then even the student athletes have talked about how, you know, as they've gone home and, and they don't have access to some of the resources they have here, you know, they're ready to get back and, and they're going to, you know, appreciate kind of what they have a little more. So, um, you know, I think all, you know, sometimes these things, obviously a, a very negative situation that we're dealing with, but there are positives that come out of it. And, and I think what's going to happen is once we get everybody back and, and get back to some sense of normalcy, uh, everybody's going to really appreciate having that opportunity again. You got a question from Sharita S. By the way, Sharita, I did some trolling on you. Uh, on your Twitter account. She's got two beagles in her abbey. I'm a huge beagle fan. In fact, my beagle's been running all over the place today. Uh, and I, I think she just had a son graduate moments too. Uh, she wants to know, will there be, this is a very popular thing, by the way, will there be an Ole Miss Ladies Forum this year? Yeah, unfortunately on that one, probably won't be able to happen. You know, we, we've got kind of a, uh, we're not able to have any summer camps until at least August 1st. And, you know, that's just in, in an effort to, to hopefully bring less people to campus, you know, uh, kind of take the variables down a little bit. Uh, you know, again, I think our focus is getting our student athletes back and our staff so that we can play this fall. Um, and we're just trying to take some of those variables out of, of bringing in, you know, other things to campus. So uh, unless there's a way that could happen maybe in, in August or maybe this fall sometime, um, I don't think that's going to happen this summer. But uh, maybe, maybe we can make it even bigger and better no, next summer. Okay, sounds good. And then I got one more. Will Clements, Will wants to know any update on whether or not SEC Media Days will be on schedule this year. I'm sure they're probably going to – will do it in some form or fashion, huh? Yeah, I think being on schedule, I think they'll definitely be on schedule. I mean, we'll do it around the same time. Uh, whether or not they're in person or not, that's the question. And mm -hmm. so I, I think those decisions are probably going to be made here in the next, you know, probably month or so, you know, a couple weeks to a month. Um, I know the SEC office is, is working hard now on, on figuring out this, you know, return to student athletes back to campus and that type of thing. And then we'll probably shift over to, you know, what the, the SEC media days look like. But, uh, you know, I think they'll definitely happen. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe like we're doing this right now, maybe a Zoom type, type scenario or, uh, you know, maybe where we can, we can fly in, fly out and, and try to, you know, use social distancing practices and, and do maybe a car wash type thing where, you're just going through and, and doing different things there. But uh, that, that information should be coming out here in, in the next few weeks. Well, and what's really cool about that, the conference is really ahead of the curve already. Over the last few years, they've really gone online with a lot of things, and fans get access to every single second of it. So that's been kind of cool. But hopefully uh, – and, boy, that will excite folks, too, to kind of get people together and talking about us as a collective group. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, I think there is some momentum right now in, in everything that, that happens. You know, you, you've got, uh, you know, Bundesliga soccer being played in Europe. Um, I was telling somebody the other day that uh, Commissioner Sankey mentioned that in one of our AD calls, and he, he referenced it was for sure the first time we'd ever referenced Bundesliga soccer in an AD call. Uh, but we're monitoring that type of thing. Korean baseball, you know, they're starting to allow some fans to come back in and uh, you know, we've got the, the PGA Tour and MLB talking about coming back sometime in July. So, you know, all of those things, SEC Media Day, all those things just continue to add and build that momentum. And you hope that the data doesn't spike and, and, and we, you know, we don't have a, you know, a spike in, in all that. But uh, I just think all of these positive things where we're starting to get back to, to action and, and some fans are starting to come as well. Um, you know, those are good things for college athletics because it gives us kind of a test case as we go through the summer. And uh, we can look at that as, as we try to figure out, you know, what our fall looks like. All right, coming up on this show, two great guests. One, dear to your heart, basketball, obviously. Our Rebel head coach, Kermit Davis. And right after that, I'm going to visit with uh, Michael Spurlock. Just your thoughts on those two guys. Well, you know, first with Coach Davis, uh, man, just what a great, great person, first of all. You know, just fun to be around. And, uh, you know, I was, I was thinking about it. You know, I, I'm not sure we've ever had a coach that, um, you know, in his first six months on the job did more rotary clubs 
did more, uh, you know, local speaking engagements. Yeah. Uh, you know, he just, he was all in for all that. And, we, and all of our coaches do that. But um, I think Kermit really in, endeared himself to, to our local community because he was intentional about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, from a coaching standpoint, you know, couldn't, couldn't be happier with where the program is headed. You know, a little, little bumpy season last year, uh, you know, with some stuff. But, uh, you know, you love the roster that he's building for this year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, excited about, you know, where he's going to take that program. No, no doubts that we'll be, you know, an NCAA tournament team year in and year out before long. Um, and then Michael Spurlock, you know, what, what an athlete. Uh, what a great guy, too. You know, he, he's just such a good person. And, uh, you know, what's interesting about Michael is when he was still playing in the NFL, he, uh, he joined our Vault Society uh, as a donor to Ole Miss. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, that was, that was awesome. You know, we, we have obviously some athletes that, that help out and, and Michael, you know, Michael ended up having a great career in the NFL, kind of bounced around a little bit, but ended up staying you know, a lot of years. And um, he, he joined the Vault Society, which I thought was really, really cool. And then, uh, you know, coached, bounced around coaching a little bit. And, and now to have him back in Oxford where he needs to be, um, you know, it's, it's really, really good. But uh, it was just fun. The first time I saw him over at the Manning Center, we just kind of, you know, did one of those, one of those bro hugs, you know. Uh, hadn't seen him in a while. Uh, but what a great guy and, and a great asset to our, uh, our coaching staff. Well, we're looking forward to visiting both of them. Keith, thanks so much. I know things are turning fast, and uh, we sure appreciate you spending some time with us. Absolutely, DK. Have a good week. All right, you too, man. Coming up, Kermit Davis, Rebel Head Basketball Coach. That's next on Rev Talk. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Mom. Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. Question. Would you rather refuel while earning Exxon and Mobile Rewards plus points on every gallon? Or would you rather refuel while sitting through my sales pitch for an exciting new timeshare opportunity? Interesting. You'd prefer the points. Well, that's proof. People prefer earning and redeeming with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus over owning a condo that's actually my shed. Earn points in-store and at the pump with Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus. Sign up today. Terms and conditions may apply. Available at participating Exxon and Mobile locations. Right now is the best time to upgrade your appliances and lower your energy bill with Smart Choice Rebates from Atmos Energy. As an Atmos Energy customer in Mississippi, you'll save up to $450 when you buy select high-efficiency natural gas appliances. So use less energy and help keep our planet green. Call 877-616-6267 or visit atmosenergy.com slash smartchoiceMS for details. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. We need the fans, alumni, former players all united and everybody on the same page, which is to win championships. We didn't come here to be good, all right? That's not why we're here today. We came here to be great. Hey, Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the bot Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. Having the right equipment is critical for any successful farm operation, and we can help with that. Your focus is maximizing production. Our focus is trust and loyalty. I'm Bobby Spinks with Mississippi Land Bank. If you make your living on the farm, this is your place. Since 1916, Mississippi Land Bank has worked alongside farmers and farm communities in North Mississippi. Whatever equipment upgrades you need, this is your place. Visit us at mslandbank.com. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now for more Reb Talk, here's David Callum. And welcome back to Reb Talk. And uh, it's always fun to visit with our athletic director, Keith Carter. And now we have Rebel head basketball coach, Kermit Davis. Hey, coach, how you doing? Okay, I'm doing good. Just been uh, trying a few different lures that I bought the other day after, after a bunch of Zoom calls today. That's my outlet for about 45 minutes. I only caught one. I'm trying to fish a little top water, so I'm not very good at it. But I'm trying to buy a fishing game, Dave. I don't know if you can do that or not. 
<laughs> I hear you. I hear you. You know, here we are. We just, uh, we're, we're not in that danger window age wise, but we're close. But I didn't think you and I are basically the same age. I didn't think we'd be zooming one day, coach. I know. Isn't that amazing? Just, you know, David, you and I have been doing it for a while. And I remember the first time, you know, like 1986, I think we've talked about it, you know, just, you know, you're on the, you're on the side of the road trying to find the filling station in the different States around America to, to make the pay phone call. Or you're yeah. trying to, you know, trying to accept, accept collect calls. So, yeah. But i tell you one thing, David, it's been an unbelievable experience for our staff. I'm so proud of our assistant coaches and our entire staff about how they kind of adapted and, uh, and got some really good things done for Ole Miss basketball this spring. Well, that's neat. I want to talk about some of those things, too. Uh, appreciate you being on uh, this time of year. We kind of relaunched Reb Talk uh, to meet a bunch of the new folks, but we wanted to kind of get up with our head coaches when we could. Uh, I know at your house, I've been watching, Allie's been cooking some pretty cool stuff. I'm telling you, she has been on a tear. She's going <laughs> to she's gonna try to – She's gonna. we're going to uh, – Betty's mother is uh, is in an Alzheimer's un, unit in Little Rock, and she hadn't seen her in a long time. We're going to try to peek through the window, and hopefully Betty and Allie, and we can see her, and then we're going to go to uh, Betty's sister for a couple of days on Memorial Day. And so Allie's going to bake a couple of really good cakes – uh, for Memorial Day, so I'll probably put those on Twitter and uh, see if she come up with some new ideas. So I, I've got an anniversary coming up August 16th, so Miss Mary and I want something out of Alley. We'll right. do a drive-by pickup. You remind me now. No, we'll personally deliver that one, David. I promise you that. <laughs> Coach, talk a little bit about I, – I know the dangers of this COVID-19 thing and, and how it's kind of forced sports out, but just the strangeness of, of no sports. I mean, you and I – you, we, we go back to when you played multiple sports and all of that, just for it to disappear is just kind of strange, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, I, I hate it for athletes. I really hate it for the seniors in high school. Yeah. God, can you remember, David, that, that was one of the most special times. I mm -hmm. still remember it like it was yesterday. I, I played – one of my funnest times was, was playing baseball my senior year, playing first base. And, and, I, and I just absolutely – loved it you know and then the senior pro the proms and all the different things that you go through and and then these seniors couldn't take official visits and uh you know can't go through graduation and so that 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 part of it is is really strange and i hate it um but you're right i, I think it it may be a redirect for all of us david to kind of mm -hmm. redirect ourselves and maybe get closely connected to our family a little bit more i've had a, a really good time my days have flown by we've been extremely busy uh i think Allie and Betty ready for me to recruit, but uh, I think we found out that I'm kind of an old school office guy that we can get things done without being in the office, you know, just all the time year round. Well, and you guys, like you mentioned earlier, your staff has just done an incredible job. Y'all have really put together uh, a, a, a wonderful recruiting period. And I, I want to talk about the roster. Let's start there as we jump into the basketball. But the good news starts, I guess, with Devontae Shuler deciding that, hey, I'm not going to try to test the pro waters I am going to come back and that's a huge plus obviously for next year's Ole Miss basketball team it is David I had a zoom individual meeting with Devontae today I have never seen him in a better place uh, just his, his overall demeanor his maturity God he's like a different guy you know two years later always been a good player but just his leadership wants to accept it can't wait to get back uh I don't know. He's, he's just – it it's really is. It's great to see him maturing like that. Graduation is very important to him. You know, obviously, you've seen Brian, you know, graduate this year. And uh, I really do. I, I mean, you think about Devontae. He may be the most experienced guy coming back in the South Conference next year. Yeah, no doubt. Looking forward to see what he can put together this next time around. And then uh, and, and then you've had – I don't. we don't have time to talk about everybody. But you've got some good pieces, obviously, coming back. Uh, and we're excited about that. But you've also, you're also going to add Jarkel Joyner. And I don't know if I've ever seen a kid uh, go through uh, as, as tough a time. I mean, he was trying to suppress it. And, boy, he wanted to play so bad this past year. But an incredible local talent that, of course, went out to California is back. And he will be ready to roll when we tip it up again. I, 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 don't, I can't imagine anybody in college basketball taking advantage uh, the COVID more than Jarkel Joyner. I mean, it's hard to do that. Mm -hmm. It's a player's time, David. You've probably heard some other coaches say it because they're not right on top of them, scheduling, you know, weightlifting meetings and nutrition meetings and all the different things, you know, 
He is unbelievable what he's done. And I bet he's probably snuck into any gym in the world. No gym is safe in Oxford, I promise you that. And uh, he's just been in his driveway. He's done every single thing he can do on an outdoor court. And I, I can't wait for the fans to see him. And we love him because he's from Oxford, but I really love him because he's a really good player, regardless <laughs> where he's from. But it's going to make it so enjoyable for the people in this area to watch him play. Yeah, no doubt. Had a phenomenal high school coach and Drew. And, uh, of course, obviously it was a good experience to be with Rod. And now to get back home and get into the SEC, I mean, he's going to be he's going to be really fired up and, and ready to go. Comes from a great family too, Coach. But, you know, I, I think sometimes people forget that it's hard to, to go get the best local guy, you know, because sometimes when you're a national recruiting program like we are, even though locally we think, oh, they should get that guy. He's great, yada, yada, yada. Sometimes it just doesn't quite work out. But it's a no-brainer with Jarkel joining. It was. When you started watching him on Synergy and when Jarkel was going to get in the transfer portal, I called Chris Jans, who's, you know, they've had kind of the elite program in the WAC at New Mexico State. And I said, Chris, what do you think? He and I are a lot alike in how we coach. And he said, he is a flat alpha dog. He said, he's unbelievable. <laughs> Kermit, I said, I'm uh, he was at Wichita State. I said, on your very best Final Four Wichita State team, would you take him? He said, no question. He said, he's just tough. He's physical. Just all the things and just just what he is. He's He can't wait. And the biggest, the best thing about him, beside his talent, his character, David, is how much he cannot wait to put that Ole Miss jersey on and play in front of the crowd in the pavilion for the first time. I mean, <laughs> he may shoot the first couple over the backboard, and then he's going to settle in pretty good, I promise you. <laughs> no doubt. Hey, let's talk about the rest of the roster, especially the the, uh, the transfers, uh, Romello White, Robert Allen, Levencio Vaughn. Uh, gosh, I mean, you guys have really gotten some key weapons here lately. You know, I, I credit our assistant coaches, David. I mean, when Case was a lead guy on Demencio Vaughn, uh, Ronnie was a lead guy on Robert Allen. Obviously, Levi was a lead guy on Romello White. Uh, we're so excited about having Matthew Morrell, Sean Robinson. You know, sometimes maybe – and I, I love kind of how the recruiting class came together because it's, it's talent, but it's experience. Great high school player in Matthew. The really good high school player set out in Sean Robinson. So a lot of different variations of being flexible. And, uh, but, but really, our, our staff did a great job. Uh, the support staff did a great job. All the PowerPoints, all the different things that – help sell Ole Miss, and, uh, and I promise you this, I, I mean, we really haven't stopped. I mean, it just mm -hmm. kept going and kept going, and I, like I said, the days passed by really, really quickly because we were so busy with all of it. Well, we're looking forward to it, and some key weapons coming back, and so I know you got to be excited about the overall roster. Yeah, we are. I mean, it's going it's to start looking more and more CC roster. Sometimes those second years are reset years. I hate it. You know, it drove me crazy at times. You knew that. Uh, yeah. You know, we could play really good brand of basketball for certain periods of time. We really needed to bring in, in the SEC to score a ton of points, it seemed like, to win a game. And that's fine, but it was too much pressure on Brian. Maybe this team would be a lot more balanced scoring. Uh, I love the place that Blake Henson has been in. Gosh, he's just worked his tail off. Uh, he said his body's in as good a shape it's ever been in. He's excited about getting back. You know, K.J. Buffin. You know, obviously, Austin Crowley's had a great, great uh, two-month period at home doing a bunch. And uh, I had an individual meeting with a dean side of the day by Zoom. He's so excited. So, you're right. We've got a, just a good combination of guys of returning and uh, and hopefully added some really good pieces that will help us. You know, I was thinking about basketball and how, you know, everything came to abrupt. We didn't have the, uh, the, the postseason and, the you know, the – the Sweet 16, the Final Eight, the Final Four, the Lead Eight. I mean, you know, all of that just it, – it was hard to swallow. And then you had – you kind of stepped back. We lost our SEC baseball season, too. You had to step back and realize that, you know, this is this is tough time. But I, I think, Coach, one of the things we hope that we can recapture is not only – you know, hopefully shortly we'll get student athletes back on campus and we do all the testing, keep them safe and all those good things. But atmosphere is so important especially in our basketball sport. So we're really hoping to get back to normal so fans can, you know, safely return, be in the pavilion, fill it up, all those kind of things, because those are important to us in basketball. Yeah, it is. You know, and it's, it's just so great to, to now see the square kind mm -hmm. of, you know, it's mm -hmm. coming back to life. And that just may – I know it's 
especially for people who've been involved with Ole Miss as long as you have, Dave. It made it just so exciting for me to ride around the square and see it and, and go out and, and, and be able to eat. And, and, and you can see the college students coming back, you know, mm -hmm. and that's great mm -hmm. to kind of see that happening. And, you know, I felt so bad for Mike Bianco and his really, really good team who, you know, may have won a national championship this year. And, uh, but they'll come back in a big way. We're all keeping our fingers crossed for, for, for football. And I think it's going to happen. I don't know how the logistically it's going to happen, but, but I just think it will. I, I think it, you know, I think we're going to have to ease into different things, just go phase by phase by phase. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, David, you know what? We all got to be just socially responsible, mm -hmm. follow the rules. Uh, it's, it's, it's a critical piece. I'm sure Keith said it. You know, that student athletes may be probably coming back first, and that is coaches, uh, that we do a really, really good job of handling our players very maturely and, and follow the exact guidelines. I think that is critical for, for, for making sure that we set really good guidelines for the freshmen who are coming in, for the different – uh, students coming back to campus, that everybody feels safe on our campus. And uh, But you know what? It's going to get back to normal at some point. We're going to have a lot of fun in Oxford. Yeah, no doubt. Can't wait. Of course, I, I was looking at you guys releasing your non-conference schedule as you were going along. And obviously, uh, Memphis coming to Oxford the first time in several years is going to be wonderful. And uh, you got the Cayman Islands trip as far as the non-conference part of it goes. And uh, I know we're trying to get this football thing going, uh, which is awfully important, but man, I can't wait for some hoops too. It's going to be fun, David. And you know, the, the schedule is coming together. Great. We've completed it. We're going to kind of keep announcing it. The Cayman Island trips, you know, we were hoping now to, uh, to charter down, sell seats on the plane. If we can work that out, you know, with having Keith thought of a great point today, you know, fans traveling with our team and, and selling seats on the, on the flight, you know, it was a three day trip Monday, we leave on a Saturday, play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Hopefully I think we're going to fly back after the game on Wednesday in time for the Egg Bowl on Thursday here. And so all those things are exciting, you know. And so we're just – we've got to take it uh, step by step, but we're looking forward to it. You're right. Can't wait to get this team on the pavilion floor and, and our fans get a chance to watch them play. You know, one of the things that excites me too, you mentioned your staff, and I know you're awfully proud of them. You got all of them pretty much intact, ready to go, huh? Yeah, it is. And – you know, not only Wynn and Ronnie and Levi and Thomas, but, but the job that Nate Dye does and the job Vic Mina and uh, Connor and, you know, I mean, th those guys have just been terrific. You know, Riley Allen, Andrew Bikey, uh, Adam, our SID. There's a lot of people that, 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 that touch it and they put their heart and soul in the basketball program and uh, we return every single person. And I think that, number one, it, it, it speaks volumes of, of just what they think about Ole Miss, they want to raise families in Oxford. They, they, their goal, our, our goal is to win an SEC regular season championship at Ole Miss and make deep, deep runs in the tournament. We knew it wasn't going to happen overnight. It's going to be a process we got to build toward, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Well, those lures may not be catching real fish, but you've had some pretty good lures fishing for, for some <laughs> talent now. I tell you what, we threw enough lures in that recruiting water, David. Holy cow. <laughs> we fished every bank. We fished every bank now, east and west of the Mississippi, I promise you. Oh, I'm looking forward to just meeting all these new guys. It should be fun. Yeah, they're going to be good guys. I think they're going to be great representatives of Ole Miss Rebels, and uh, we can't wait to get everybody back on campus, get everybody assimilated, and get started again. All right, Coach. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Thanks, DK. Appreciate right. you. Head coach right. Kermit Davis, Ole Miss <laughs> basketball. When we come back, we're going to jump back in the football world. we got uh, Michael Spurlock on deck. That's next. In sports, success is measured in the number of points scored, in games won, and in championships earned. At Shelter Insurance, we measure success in the quality of our products and services, in how we support our communities, in being there when you need us most. In fact, nine out of 10 people surveyed with a claim would recommend Shelter to a friend. To find out how Shelter can be there for you, visit shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter.
Hi, this is Gant Boone with Oxford University Bank. You've heard about our Casasa Cash Checking Account paying 2.5% interest on balances up to $50,000. That interest could, depending on your balance, pay for an unlimited cell phone plan for you and one other, or pay for two gas fill-ups per month for an average size gas tank, or maybe a nice mint on the square is what you desire. Regardless, this is real money we will give you for doing three things you are probably already doing. So stop in today or visit us online at liveoxfordbankoxford.com, Oxford University Bank, member FDIC. Hey Rebel Nation, this is head football coach Lane Kiffin. Let's lock the bot Saturdays this fall. Become a season ticket holder today. Visit OleMissTix.com. That's OleMissTix.com. Hotty toddy. For over 50 years, Mississippi Asthma and Allergies Board Certified Team of Allergists have treated patients in Mississippi by identifying triggers that cause patients trouble and creating personalized treatment plans. Now with offices in Jackson, Ridgeland, Meridian, D'Iberville, and Oxford, it's like we're right next door when you need us. Treating adults, infants, teens, and Ole Miss students. Find the Mississippi Asthma and Allergy Clinic near you at msaac.com. Mississippi Asthma and Allergy, helping Mississippi live life to the fullest. That's the sound of rush hour. Hello, recess. Work from home is a lot of work. Even though we're a little further apart right now, we're still in this together. Regions is donating this ad to local food banks to shine a light on them as they feed our neighbors in need. Learn how you can help or get help at regions.com slash food bank. Regions Bank, member FDIC. As we navigate the COVID-19 crisis, O'Reilly Auto Parts is dedicated to serving you. We've been deemed an essential business, so our doors will stay open. We encourage you to buy online, then pick up curbside. Together, we're committed to getting through this. Hotty Toddy Ole Miss. Now, for more Reb Talk, here's David Callum. Hey, and welcome back to our third segment of Reb Talk this week. And we have got uh, to jump back into football. And we talked to you about uh, throughout the year, we've used this uh, relaunch of, of Reb Talk to try to meet some new people. Well, this is a new staff member, but there's nothing new about Michael Spurlock. Hey, Michael, how are you? I'm great. How you doing? Man, I'm hanging in there. You know, this this staying at home COVID stuff. And I'm about tired of this mess, but you know, we got to do what we got to do, huh? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I think uh, I've done all the yard work, all the home improvements that I can possibly do right now. So yeah, <laughs> let's get back to football. Get back to football, and we'll we'll wait several years before we jump back in this other. Uh, of course, everybody knows Michael and his new title with Ole Miss is Senior Player Personnel Analyst. We'll get him to talk about what that is here in a moment. Uh, he's coming to Ole Miss from CELA, where he was at Southeast Louisiana as a wide receivers coach. Of course, had a wonderful career in the NFL as a kick return specialist and a wide receiver. And he's now on Lane Kiffin's staff, originally from Indianola, Mississippi. Uh, right now, he's in Philadelphia, where his wife is from. They're hanging out uh, down there. He, he coached at Philadelphia High School for a year, also assistant coach at Cahoma Community College. And uh, handle running backs, special teams coordinator there, was with the Dallas Cowboys for a year as well. Special teams defensive back assistant was with Texas San Antonio. Special teams quality control linebacker assistant. Special teams uh, worked as assistant with them as well. And then you throw the NFL career in there. Michael Spurlock uh, as receiver and kickoff partner <laughs> was an NFL. Sign, see if I got this order right. Signed with the Cardinals undrafted in 06. Then went to yes, Tampa sir. Bay, 49ers, Chargers, Jaguars, Lions, Cowboys, Bears. That's how that's how it looks on paper, but uh, let me help you. So, okay. Arizona, Tampa, San Fran, back to Tampa, um, San Diego, <laughs> Jacksonville, back to San Diego, um, <laughs> Dallas, well, Detroit, Dallas, back to Detroit, then Chicago. And then you throw in all the coaching stops here recently. I mean, do you even know where you are? You, you told me you're Philadelphia, and I'm glad you know. Wow, you've been all over the place in your football career, huh? Well, I have uh, definitely seen the uh, United States on someone else's dime, and uh, <laughs> I've enjoyed it. 
Um, but you know, it's, it's part of the profession. And, uh, you know, when people ask, well, where are you from? I like, well, my original hometown where I live, uh, what do I call home? You got to kind of clarify that. So, um, but no, it's been a great journey. I met a lot of great people. And, uh, I mean, I, I just think if you're in this business, um, nowhere is really home. Home is where you make it. And, uh, that's pretty much where my wife and kids are and, you know, wherever house we have at that time, uh, whatever city we in, that's what they consider home. And so you just, you just go from there. You know, while you're in the NFL, I know you returned to uh, kickoff, I guess it was against the Saints the year they won the Super Bowl in the regular season. That was huge. Yes, sir. And became <laughs> uh, the first player to ever return one for Tampa Bay against the Saints. And then was it, I guess it was the Chargers punt return and kickoff return for a touchdown in the same season. It never happened in yes, that sir. organization. Right. You know, I think about you, Michael, and you're a quarterback at Ole Miss. You jump in the NFL, you know, willing to make whatever change you can to kind of stick on and have a career and undrafted. Right. And, man, you carved out what ended up – even though you had to bounce around a lot, you carved out what was a very good NFL career. You had a total of five kickoff returns for touchdowns, three catches, I think, so eight total touchdowns in the NFL. You have to be awfully proud of that. Uh, I am, and, you know, uh, when people talk about the NFL, I was like, well, the NFL don't owe me anything. Uh, one, on paper, I wasn't supposed to get there, but um, it's just amazing how God kind of works things out. And uh, we joke about it, it's like, well, what would you have done if you play receiver? And I just think when you start moving other things around, you end up having to change other things to try to get to the same outcome. But I wouldn't change a thing. Um, I had a great time at Ole Miss, made a, met a lot of great people, uh, a lot of people who helped mold me into what I am and who I am, and then go to the NFL. I mean, uh, you know, we just made sure that we kept bags packed because we took a lot of flights. <laughs> and uh, it was funny because the lady that ships our cars and uh, kind of helped, you know, ship furniture, every time I call her, she would be like, all right, Michael, where, where are we going now? And, you know, it just got to the point where she knew when I called, okay, all right, we're picking up and we're shipping you somewhere. So it kind of become uh, just your norm, and uh, it, it was fun. My kids enjoyed it because they had new stuff everywhere we went. So they just thought, okay, what team are we going to next? So <laughs> That's great. But you must have met a ton of people, too, to be with that many organizations. And, and I mean, from a, not only from a player standpoint, but from a coaching standpoint and all, I mean, your list of influences must be huge. Um, you know, they tell you when you get done playing, write down all the coaches you know and, you know, people of influence. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's anywhere in the United States or any team uh, that I don't even know. I, I probably played with one player on the team, and I'm sure I know the coach, the manager, the trainer. I know somebody. Uh, you know, when I was in Dallas, we used to go to different stadiums, and I'm like, oh, that's such and such. And they're like, how do you know him? And I was like, well, when I played here, he was this, so when I uh, played here, he was coaching this. So, uh, you know, it, it makes it good to where anywhere you go, you know somebody, um, you can kind of – for me, I'm, I think I'm a person that I'm able to talk with anybody and have a conversation and meet them on any level. And I think that's because of I moved around so much, I've had to, you know, get acclimated quickly and uh, just make it as comfortable as possible. So. Um, it's, it's nowhere I don't think you can drop me that uh, I would say, okay, I'm afraid of being here. I know I know somebody or I get to know him real quick. Well, having known you when you were in college, I'm not surprised at all because, I mean, you <laughs> handle good things, bad things, you know, with grace. And, and uh, I think it probably set you up for, for what was a interesting travel here, travel there, a pro career. Did you run into Lane Kiffin somewhere along the way or how did, how did you and him hook up for this particular job? Well, it's, uh, it's funny how things happen. Um, and again, the people that you meet. Uh, so I was out recruiting and, um, at Starkville and they end up coming into town. And I was like, well, I met Mississippi State staff, their new staff. And I just wanted to say hello. And uh, Chris Jones was like, well, Ole Miss is coming. If you don't have anywhere to go, Ole Miss is coming. I was like, well, that'll be cool. I get to meet Lane. I knew money because he was in Tampa with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so look who comes in, Tom, Luke, and I'm like, that's Lane right there. And he was like, yeah. So I just introduced myself and we had a short conversation. Never in a million years said, hey, you know, I'm looking for a job or anything like that. Well, time go, goes by and it's like, hey, uh, what you think of, you know, just asking, what you think of coming home? I'm like, 
like right now? Do I need to pack my bags? I mean, I mean, that's a no brainer. And time kind of passed and I was like, okay, well, maybe that opportunity has passed and, uh, you know, it, it was a good thought, but it didn't happen well. Um, I fly to Texas State and I just took it, take a job there. I'm filling my paperwork out. I do all that. Well, I fly back on Wednesday and uh, I'm sitting at my wife's basketball game and I get a strange number text. I'm like, I mean, call. And I'm like, well, I call them back. Well, I get a text. And they're like, hey, this is Coach Levy. Uh, hit me up when you get a chance. So I'm like, okay. I said, well, it's going to be late. So I ended up calling them back. He was like, no, you're not going there. You're coming home. Uh, let me call you back in the morning. So they called me back the next morning and said, hey, it's a done deal. And my wife, my wife has moved. Only thing she asks is, is it hot or cold? Um, how do I need to pack for the kids? You know, this was the only time she was like, I said, well, what do you think? Because I go from being three hours away, I'm about to be 12, 13 hours away in San Marcos. And she was like, well, I mean, you know, do whatever you want to. You, it would be nice for you to be back home, da, da, da. Well, I tell I'm taking the job. And she was like, that was a great decision. I really appreciate you being back home. And, you know, uh, for me, I remember being an 18-year-old kid at Ole Miss. Uh, people like yourself, Tom, Luke, and, you know, just the, the great people, uh, um, JT. Um, great people that made Ole Miss, and now I'm a 37-year-old man coming back, seeing some of those people that kind of helped me get through as a kid, now coming back and being a part of, you know, uh, everybody say, well, it would be nice to go back to your alma mater, um, and that's a far-fetched dream, and for me, uh, no, no place else would be greater than working at Ole Miss. Uh, I get great people. Coach Nix is, I mean, he's giving me nothing but a great time and, you know, just kind of showing me the ropes. And Lane, I mean, you just look at his track record, uh, Coach Levy. And for me, it's a it's a new circle of people. Um, I, I know a lot of people, but I'm not really friends with any of them on the staff. So it's good for them to see you work as well as you learn new football. Uh, it's been a great opportunity. Unfortunately, the pandemic kind of, uh, stalled everything, mm. but I mean, the Zoom meetings have been great, but it's been good to be around those guys and just uh, help, you know, propel and continue to learn in this profession. Well, it's great to have you back, man. No question about that. When you came up here with Southeast Louisiana Play Us, I met you on the field. We got a little yes, bit, sir. of course, a bunch of people did that with you. I wasn't the only yes. one, but I, I just kind of whispered to us, man, we got to get you back here someday. I didn't know it was going to be this fast. So that's cool. Well, you and you and I uh, both didn't know it was this fast. And, you know, it was great seeing everybody. Um, I mean, just like the, my, my players are acting like, how does it feel to be back? I'm like, the words can't even explain, you know, to be on the sideline, to be back in that stadium. I've been back. The first game I, I came back to, uh, 2014, I got released maybe first week in Chicago and me and my wife, we were just kind of hanging out and I had season tickets for uh, the Alabama game. Well, I had season tickets, but it was coming up to the Alabama game. And she was like, uh, well, you know, Alabama's playing. You want to go back? So we drove in the middle of the night, got up, drove back. And I got there that morning. Uh, we kind of ate breakfast at my brother-in-law's house and we ended up going to the game. That was 2000, I think 2014, they uh, beat Alabama there. Uh, so it was great to be back and see that. And, you know, you, you dream of those moments and now to be a part of it. I mean, uh, I can't, I can't write a better uh, scripted ending, you know, to be at home. So. No doubt. Okay. So now let me ask you, cause fans are going to want to know what is a senior player personnel analyst on Lane Kiffin's staff? What will you be doing? Um, I work with uh, strictly the wide receivers, but you do everything from breaking down film. You are, you are GA except the classes, if that makes sense. Um, but you break down film, uh, you do pretty much anything that involves coaching except coaching. You can't really coach the players. You can give notes and stuff like that to the position coach about what you see or why you watch and practice, what goes on. But uh, it's really no, it's everything kind of behind the scenes. And for me, it's a great opportunity because uh, you don't know what you don't know until you get into the position of being a coach. And I learned a lot being a position coach. Uh, now, you know, SEC is big time ball. Um, a lot of people are like, well, you're an analyst, you're kind of stepping back. You always want your position, but at the same time to learn from someone uh, like Coach Nix has been 
uh, at Ole Miss, 12, 13 years. Mm -hmm. um, to be around another offensive mind like Coach Levy and Coach Kiffin, uh, I thought it was a great opportunity. And then it gets me two hours from home. Uh, so, um, but really it's everything behind the scenes. Uh, you'll probably never see me unless uh, maybe before games or during the game, you'll never see me. But we try to break down film. You dig deep on team with tendencies and things of that sort. And uh, you just you're you're an added hand to the position coach, and uh, I th I think it's gonna be a great and awesome season, and a great job working with those guys because um, Coach Kiffin has been great at FAU. Uh, you look at Coach Levy at Baylor and UCF, so um, just a different brand of football and you know a different way of thinking. Uh, I've been in the NFL a long time, uh, listening to how they do things, and now this is. It's basketball on grass, and uh, it's going to be fun to be a part of. You know, I think about your career, too. All right, as a player, obviously high school, Division One, NFL, and, and then as a coach, you've already done some high school, some JUCO, uh, and now, you know, D1 you've done. You did a little right. uh, taste in the NFL. My goodness, you, you ought to be, Michael. I'm not trying to blow your head up, but a very valuable asset because you've seen tons of different styles of, of football at this point. Oh, yeah, definitely. And uh, that, that's the thing that, you know, I want to bring. I want to be a an asset uh, just not to say you know everything, but let's think about it this way. And not to say that, hey, you have to go with the idea, but I think the more brains you have and the more people you can learn from, uh, iron sharpens iron. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys when I was at Southeast, they were like, man, you're moving fast. I'm like, well, I don't know what road or what rope you're looking at, but um, I have done a lot. Um, I've, I've been a lot of different places, but I think I still have so far to go. And uh, I think this is just a, another added tool to, to make me a better coach and uh, to also take everything that I know and the way that I view things and look at it from uh, someone else's view. Because uh, I think as, as players, ex-players, and now you get into coaching, I think you become stubborn at times. And, you know, you always want to, okay, let me get a new outlook. And uh, just like when I play, you want to reinvent yourself a little bit and kind of when you, as they say, when you go into a game, you want to have different tools in your tool bag. And I think this is going to be an added tool. You know, you mentioned Derek Nix, who was a great player in the state of Mississippi in high school, like you were, went on and, you know, forged a wonderful career at uh, Southern Mississippi. And he's moving wide receivers now. He's been a running back coach and all. He's one of my favorite all-time assistant coaches, by the way. He's oh, just yeah, definitely. incredible. Incredible coach, and it's very fortunate that we've been able to to keep him kind of a, along the way and all. But you know, I, I think about this too, Michael. We lost a great Mississippian this week, and in, in uh, General Ben Williams, who was the first African American football player at Ole Miss. And uh, you know, when he was here, I remember as a uh, being here at Ole Miss, and it was before I was a student out there. I was in high school at the time, but uh, I mean, just great personality, super guy. I think he was the right one to kind of open the door for everybody, so to speak. Just your thoughts in general about Ben and, and what he meant to Ole Miss. Um, I just think that, you know, every time people think, think about Ole Miss, uh, you see it on the recruiting trail, you just hear negativity. Um, but I tell anybody, if you've ever been on campus, then I think your view changes. Uh, and I kind of piggyback on that. Um, I was a Mississippi State fan growing up because that's all that I knew. Uh, my best friend, brought me to Ole Miss, and I just think about the great people that I met there, uh, him being a pioneer, and you got to think about it. Back then, you had to be a, a pretty strong-willed person to say, you know what, I'm going to be the first. I'm going to go somewhere where uh, on the outside looking in, nobody wants me there. I'm going to be an outsider, but I think he's a trailblazer. I mean, you just look at uh, all the African-Americans that have come through Ole Miss, and uh, I think just what everybody is doing now, pushing Ole Miss forward and being a forward thinking just uh, to help the, the outlook. Because in, in Mississippi, you do have that. And like I tell them, you know, racism, I think racism is everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just in Mississippi. It's not just at Ole Miss and things of that sort. Uh, I think if you go there, you realize that this is a place you can call home because I don't think there are better people or a better place than Ole Miss. Um, it's where I went from being an 18-year-old kid to being a 23-year-old young man. And, you know, everybody say, hey, uh, would you ever, if you could do it again, would you go back? I say, I would do it 10 times over because it's a great place. Uh, you have great people. You can raise your kids there. 
Um, it's a place that uh, I have four girls, two boys. I want to bring them there and get them to understand the history. And uh, I think it, it's, it's rich in history. And yeah, some of it is not the prettiest, but I think it, we're, the way that we're going and where we've gone from there, I think it's the best thing in the world. And uh, you just got to come on campus and see it. The Grove, uh, I don't know what heaven feels like, but uh, it got to be something like heaven. Yeah, it got to be, no doubt. You know, I love Sinquest Golson's quotes, one of my favorite. I think he was on the season or a TV show one time, and uh, Sinquest said, uh, hey, if you don't want to go Ole Miss, don't visit. Because <laughs> yes. it's a beautiful I mean, that, place. That's the truth, you know. Uh, if they get you on campus, I remember going up there and like, okay, I'm, I'm going to try it out. But you get on campus and you're like, man, wow, wow. And then you meet the people and – they win you over, and then now before you know it, now you're recruiting people there. Um, so it, it's a it's a beautiful place, and like San Quirio said, you get on campus, it's a done deal. We just got to get you on campus. Uh, just come see us. We we're not gonna promise you anything, but come see us, and I think it'll do the uh, do the work for you. Michael, it's been great to visit with you tonight. But before I let you go, one last one last thing. You know, you've bounced around as we talked about, and this journey has been here, there, here, there. I hope that it, it settles down a little while, and you hang out at Ole Miss. For, for a long time period. But ultimately, as you've moved into coaching, are, are your aspirations to someday be a head coach? Um, that, that was my aspiration, and I don't know if it changed a little bit. Um, I just study and watch different people. Um, the one thing that they tell me about being a head coach is you, you don't really get to coach anymore, and you're more of a politician, you're more the face of the program. Uh, being in Louisiana, I got to hang out a little bit at LSU with, with Coach Orgeron, and uh, he's a D-line coach, and um, you know how much he loves his D-line, but again, he's the face, and you know, just being around Lane, uh, Lane is in our meetings, but at the same time, it's so many other people pulling on him. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I do want to try it at some point just to say, hey, you know, you're the, the last stamp on everything, um, but I, I really like being a position coach because uh, those guys are your babies and you get to mold them. And the reason I got into coaching is because I've been around a lot of great coaches. I've been around a lot of bad coaches. And I just think being able to tell a kid, be disciplined, you tell them the truth. They might not like it, but they're going to respect you for it. And that was the only reason I got into coaching is to help grow young men into grown men and help them to be a productive citizen. So, um, I think I, I want to be a position coach long enough to I can kind of say, okay, I've done enough there. I want to move on. Uh, but who knows? You just never know in this business how, you know, what avenue you might take, uh, what op, uh, option might present to you uh, early on, later. You just never know. But if I am ever given that opportunity, I would love to at least try it and just see um, if, if I'm good at it, you know. Well, tell your wife, kids, we're hiding the suitcase. Not going anywhere else, at least for a little while, that's for sure. Hey, you know, she's uh, got her fingers crossed, and uh, the kids definitely, they can't wait to come up there. And uh, they, you know, it's the summertime, definitely when the pandemic, uh, the corona leaves us, or at least get us back to, you know, being normal again. Uh, they're definitely going to be running around the Grove and running around the indoor, definitely. No doubt. Michael, thank you so much, man. Michael Spurlock. Thank you. Y'all be good. Have a good night. Great to have. And that wraps up Rev Talk this week. That was a lot of fun. We'll see you next week.